In the recent Q1 earnings call, Elon Musk said some things about artificial intelligence and vision that I think have profound consequences. Let's take a look and find out. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So I wanna to touch on two specific quotes that Elon Musk had during the earnings call. One was before questions and another one was an answer to a question from a Robert M. Investor. I think both of these are profound and are definitely worth discussing. So let's take a listen to the first one first and talk about it. It, it, it was making up for some of the shortfalls of vision, but this is not good. You actually just need vision to work. And when vision works, it works, it, 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 it works better than the best human. Um, it's like having eight cameras. It's like having eyes in the back of your head, the sides of your head, and, and, and three eyes at different focal distances looking forward. Um, this is, yeah, um, and, and processing it at a speed that is superhuman. This, this, I, I have no, there's no question in my mind that uh, with a pure vision solution, uh, we can make a car that is dramatically safer than uh, the average person. So, but, but it is a hard problem because we are actually solving something quite fundamental about artificial intelligence. We're, 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 we basically have to solve real-world vision or AI. Um, and we are. So, um, and key to solving this is also having just a massive data set. So um, just having um, well over a million cars on the road uh, that, are, that are collecting data from uh, very sort of corner case rare situations, um, you know, sort of like a, so many weird things in the world, like, like, like a, you know, a truck carrying a truck. So as you just heard, Elon is talking about how important it is to be able to solve vision, to be able to solve full self-driving via vision, as opposed to using crutches like LiDAR and now even radar, apparently. So that's pretty profound if you think about it. He's talking about how important it is for a computer to be able to operate the same way that a human being operates. In other words, we use our eyes and we look at the road and we figure out what's going on and we use the wetware that we have in our heads to process that information and to make sense out of the world and specifically in the roads and to drive as safely as we can. Now, of course, the advantages that computers have is that they are way, way faster than humans and they don't get distracted. So those are two really important things. And by the way, if you didn't watch our road trip video, I'll put a link to it up here. It's, it's really, there are some parts of it where we talk about the fact that even the non-beta version of the full self-driving package, right? So we don't have the new 8.x or whatever uh, version, but the old version, the current version, version that's out for everybody still works fantastically and especially after hours and hours and hours of driving it's really really better than a human being you just can't help getting tired after a while right if you've been driving for 12 hours even if you've been switching off drivers and so forth you get tired and your brain starts getting addled and you get slow and a computer just doesn't do that as long as the computer is functioning it's functioning and it will work perfectly fine and everything will go well <laughs> so it's really profound how much better of a driver the full self-driving package is on the highway right now than a human being who is tired. Now, I would say still when I am at my best, you know, just getting in the car and feeling fresh in the morning or something, I am definitely better than the full self-driving package as it stands right now, especially on city streets, which it's not really promised to work on. But on the highway, after driving for a long period of time, there's no question the, the full self-driving is actually better than I am. Of course, Elon also talks about how important it is to have a massive fleet that's collecting data constantly. It's interesting because he talked about the truck carrying a truck, and we actually passed that with full self-driving enabled, and I was like, ooh, I wonder how it's going to handle that. Handled it flawlessly. It registered it on the display screen as just a regular truck. But it was definitely, you know, it was a tow truck with another truck on top of it facing backwards with the lights backwards. I assumed that the AI was going to completely freak out, but it actually handled it perfectly well, which was very, very cool. So that's a weird edge case. You know, we also pass by things like in the middle of the night with roads that markings just kind of disappeared under construction. And suddenly there's like, you, you know how the old lines would like go straight or something. And then there's new lines painted over the top, but it's not very well painted. They just kind of scratched out the old version. There's 
bizarre stuff like that. And the, and the full self-driving actually handled it amazingly well. You know, you're always kind of like on edge and you're driving, you're like, okay, is it going to handle this? Is it going to handle it? But it did really, really well. And remember, this isn't even the beta version. This isn't even the new version that's doing, you know, better than the old version and more human. So it's, it's profound how well the full self-driving works, even without having access to the beta. And I think it's really critical here to understand that what Elon Musk is talking about here is actually changing the world, right? He's talking about computers that will drive on roads like human beings do. And by the way, these are robots. They're not just computers. They are robots. They interact with the universe around them. I've done some videos on this stuff before, so definitely check those out if you can. Uh, but anyway, they, they, they interact with the world, right? So you get, you take in some data, you process that data, and then you make an, a decision about an action to do in the world. And that's the difference between a computer and a robot. A computer, you type in stuff, and yes, there's an interface, but basically it spits back information on a display or via sound or something like that, but it can't really interact with the world in a physical way. It can't say, make a turn or something like that. So, so robots don't have to look like those Boston Dynamics robots that walk around and everything. They, they can look like cars because cars are robots. Cars take in data from the world, they process that data, and then they, they turn. They make uh, you know, decisions about what to do in the physical world. So that is the definition of a robot. So they really are robots operating in the world, and they're operating extremely dangerous equipment, right? If you think about it, if you've got a two-ton automobile that you're driving at 100 plus kilometers an hour, that thing is incredibly dangerous, which is why people die in them. And so the, the safer we can make these incredibly dangerous machines to operate, the better everyone is. And that's why this is so profound. And that's why it's also really, really different from companies like Waymo and GM Cruise, etc., that are working on LiDAR and they're essentially driving these cars on rails. It's I always liken it to an amusement park ride. It's, it's a roller coaster that's on these rails. And the rails are LiDAR rails. They've done a high definition map of the area around. And what they do is they drive on these rails. And yes, they can react to little things that are happening around them, but they can't go outside of those rails. Just like in an amusement park, it would be a really bad thing if your roller coaster went off the rails and, I don't know, caused a wreck. You know, it'd be problematic if that happened in an amusement park. Same basic idea on the roads. These other cars are not really doing full self-driving. They're driving on a amusement park ride. They're not driving on real roads. So anyway, as Elon Musk said, they are on the cusp of, if you can trust them at least, solving one of the most complex and vexing problems in you know, in all of interactivity, <laughs> not just AI, but they're solving it with artificial intelligence and machine learning. And as a practitioner of that, it's amazing to think about that. And in fact, I was, you know, very rapidly rejected from Tesla. <laughs> I went ahead and applied to their, their AI division and they were like, nope, you know, and I actually have some reasonable credentials in terms of my, uh, you know, publications and my background in, in AI. And it, obviously the team that they are assembling or have assembled is some of the best people in the world and I just can't compete at that level. So it's a little humbling to know that, but also it's pretty amazing to think about how impressive this group of people is and what they are doing and how they are solving such a complex and difficult problem. All right, and now let's take a listen to the second quote that I want to touch on, which has even more profound implications. It, although, like right now, people think of Tesla as, a lot of people think Tesla's a car company or perhaps an energy company. Um, I think long-term people will think of Tesla as much as an AI robotics company as we are a car company or an energy company. Um, I think we are developing one of the strongest hardware and software AI teams in the world. Um, certainly, we, we appear to be able to do uh, things with full self-driving that, that others uh, cannot. So, um, and if you look at the evolution of, uh, our, of what technologies we developed, um, we developed them in order to solve the problem of self-driving. So we, we, we couldn't find a powerful enough neural net in front of a computer, so we designed and, and built our own. Um, the, the software out there was, was, was uh, really quite primitive for this task, and so we built a team from scratch um, and, um, and have been developing what we think is probably the most advanced real-world uh, AI in the world. Um, and then it sort of makes sense that this is kind of what needs to happen because 
the road system is designed for a neural net computer, our brain. Our brain is a neural net computer. Uh, and it's designed, the, the entire road system is designed for vision with, neural, with a neural net computer, which is because it's designed for eyes in a brain. Um, and so if you have a system which has very good eyes, uh, you can see in all directions at once, you can see three focal points ahead or forward, uh, but it never gets tired, it's never t sort of texting, um, it has redundancy, um, and its reaction time is superhuman, then it seems pretty obvious that, that such a system would achieve an extremely high level of safety far in excess of the average person. All right, so that's a lot of information. Let's kind of break it down. I'm actually gonna start at the end of this quote because it kind of ties into what I was talking about previously, which is that the Tesla robot, the Tesla computer, et cetera, is superhuman in its capabilities. In other words, it doesn't just have two eyes, it has eyes all around it. So it has eight cameras, it has multiple focal lengths, which means it can see far away and up close, as opposed to our eyes that have to continuously change focus you know, ourselves, which takes time and, and energy and we don't do it as efficiently as we could. So anyway, it's got more sensors than human beings do. And that's actually profound. Now, also with the beta version that's coming out, all of those sensors are tied into one sort of 360 degree camera view and it's consistent over time. And so again, I've talked about this in more detail in other videos, but the fact that it's not just taking individual images and asking what's going on, but it's saying what's happening over this period of time allows the neural network to be much, much more advanced and to do much better, I guess, than any other neural network out there. And as Elon Musk said, that the software that existed was kind of rudimentary. I'm sure in experimental situations like I do at universities, that it works really interestingly and there's all these cool things, but that doesn't really solve real world stuff. It's got to solve these problems in real time and it's gotta be 99.999999% efficient at doing so without making a mistake in order to replace humans. And all of that is profoundly important. So anyway, the upshot is that these computers, these robots, these cars actually have a very, very good chance and already are in many circumstances better than human beings driving. And that is huge. And now back to the first half of this quote. What's going on here is that Elon Musk is saying in the future, so who knows how long that will be, but let's say 10 years or something, so 2030, 2031, that Tesla is not going to be known as a car company or an energy company, which is what most people focus on right now. Those are the two things. In fact, most people think Tesla is a car company and they're like, why is it valued so high? It shouldn't be valued so high. But even those who are going like, yeah, Tesla is an energy company also, and that is a multi-trillion dollar industry, of course, they're going to disrupt that as well. And that's huge that they are in involved in that. But at the heart of all of this stuff, the energy and the automobiles, the driving, and also in the construction of the factories. And by the way, I have not had a chance to do a video on this yet, but I visited the, you know, Terra, Texas, the, the Austin, Texas Gigafactory. It is so massive that it's kind of mind bending how big this thing is. I'll throw in some B-roll here for your enjoyment as we go. But anyway, it's it's so big and the production lines and everything are so must be so complicated to create that I don't have proof of this, but I imagine that they are using machine learning and AI to help them develop the most efficient lines possible. That they were showing at the Fremont Pilot Factory, the 4680 cells, the way that it's taking up three dimensional volume and moving consistently consistently. Obviously, they took a lot of cues from things like bottling companies and so forth, but I have a feeling they were using machine learning and computers to figure out, help them figure out how to most efficiently use three-dimensional space. So what that would mean is that they're using AI, they're using computers to help them design the factories that are building all of these things. In addition, things like power packs and mega packs, etc., are using auto bidder software to purchase energy and to sell it at advantageous times, which makes currently just power companies, but eventually consumers, a great deal of money. And that also has profound implications and that is AI based. And then of course the cars themselves, the, the Tesla automobiles are utilizing 
AI to do full self-driving and Dojo, which is the backend computer system that is coming online. And I think by this summer, it's supposed to be completed. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. Anyway, I did a video on that a little while back, so you can check that out if you're interested. But all of this means that they're utilizing artificial intelligence, computers, machine learning at the heart of everything that they do. They're developing all of this stuff using AI. And that means that the entire company's sort of underpinning and backbone is artificial intelligence, machine learning, and computing, et cetera. And not just the software. As Elon said, they developed hardware for themselves because they were like, nah, the NVIDIA solution wasn't good enough for us. So we're just going to go ahead and develop our own hardware, which is also profound. So they're not just a software team that's using off-the-shelf hardware and saying like, yeah, let's do the best we can with it. They're like, nah, this hardware is not good enough for us. Let's build something new. And that allows them to do things like uh, at a different part of the earnings call, Elon talked about the supply chain complexity and the problem with chip shortages that everyone is experiencing right now. And what Tesla was able to do because they have such a strong stable of computer engineers and programmers in their company, they were able to pivot and use other people's hardware chips that they had not designed for and they were able to recode everything and create new firmware for all of this so that it could integrate into their automobile seamlessly and that is profound also right so essentially what they've got is they've got an incredible stable of, in, of very intelligent engineers both hardware and software engineers that are creating some absolutely amazing stuff and basically the company itself is a computer company, an AI company that creates robots, it creates energy solutions, and it even creates the machine that makes the machine. All of this using computing and using AI and using machine learning. This is absolutely profound and it's going to have massive implications. I think Tesla is currently way undervalued on the stock front. Again, not a stock analyst, blah, blah, blah. But, but it's incredible how people are not seeing the most important aspect of Tesla. <laughs> I think somebody said this about Domino's, that they're not a pizza company, they're a technology company that happens to make pizzas. And Tesla is an AI company that happens to make cars, and they happen to make energy solutions, and they happen to make factories, and they happen to do all of this stuff based upon their understanding of how computers are changing the world. And that means that they're at the forefront. They are the only company that is doing all of these things. And the reason they can is because they're so flexible because they have such a brilliant team of engineers working for them that they're able to kind of modulate the basic spine of using machine learning and artificial intelligence to do all of these things. So there's this kind of branching aspect, but AI is at the center of it all. And that's something that people aren't seeing. What they're seeing is they're seeing the symptoms. They're seeing the car, they're seeing the power wall, they're seeing the mega pack, they're seeing the auto bidder. They're not seeing what's at the heart of it all, which is the AI software. And that is what's so profound about this. And yes, in 10 years, Tesla is probably going to be known as an AI company that makes a bunch of stuff. All right, I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it fun and interesting. If you did, please do like it so other people can find it because that's how YouTube's AI algorithm works. And also subscribe for more of this. And also a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. You all are wonderful. Thank you for producing this show, which I pretty much do by myself. But it's really helpful that you all are so supportive, both financially and emotionally and everything. Thank you so much. And also don't forget about our merch store that has Tesla Rockets for the People t-shirt and a bunch of other t-shirts and tumblers and other items, definitely check it out in the description. And of course, don't forget that we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how clicking on a link and going shopping helps out the channel. Thank you. And as always, feel free to leave me questions in the comments or at my email address, which is drknowitallknows at gmail.com. Till next time, bye-bye.